Yo. I see it. There oh, she is. There, the most beautiful woman in the world. God bless you. All right. So let me tell you this story really quickly, um, which really quickly is never really quickly with me. But anyway, I'll try to make it fast. So um, I had been at my sister's and she collected all these Barbie dolls, right? And had them displayed. And Dustin had started doing gold dust just like maybe three months before this. And so I was at Amy's and I saw that. And then I was laying in the tanning bed. Dustin was on the road. Dakota's like maybe a year and a half old. So I'm laying in our tanning bed and I just started like, I do a lot of my best thinking in the tanning bed. Amen to that. So I, um, I'm thinking, what is it that, that WWF doesn't have right now? Like, what are they missing? And so since Dustin was supposed to be this, you know, most amazing actor, um, I started thinking, and, and, and androgynous, right? I started thinking, um, this was the vision I had because this is the Barbie doll. Um, it's a Bob oh, wow. Mackie Barbie doll. I just found this the other day and had to show people. Anyway, I started seeing that in my head and then just imagining the old Hollywood glamour. You know, dresses with trains, like red carpet type dresses and, um, you know, everything gold. And and I, so I came up with the entire character of Marlena. Um, and my idea was either, since I enjoyed cigars and I enjoyed wine, I was either going to go to the ring with a glass of wine or go to the ring with a cigar. And so we, we decided it would be safer to do the cigar instead of having, you know, glass break and whatever. So anyway, and, and you know, shame for me to get drunk right there on live TV. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so um, like the entire character I came up with because there was Sonny and then um, Sherry Martell, which, you know, Sherry's character. And so I was like, this is exactly what they need. Like they don't have an elegant female, uh, you know, a real. And so I brought in elements of, androgyny via um marlena dietrich um was an actress in old old hollywood and she was one of the very first women to ever wear pantsuits like it was just taboo for women to wear pants and she would wear pants and she also would smoke a cigar and so i'm like that is that girl is after my own heart right because i would sew every night not every night but three nights a week um run a bubble bath a glass of wine and have a cigar just loved it. So um, I called Dustin. I'm in the tanning bed. I called Dustin. I'm like, I have this idea. He's like, great. I love it. And I said, okay, cool. And he goes, call Vince. And I said, you work for him. I don't. You call him. And back during that time, Dustin was so like very scared of authority. Like he was nervous as hell to talk to Vince or anyone else. Anyway, he said, no, if you want to do the character, you call, which that was his cop out <laughs> to not have to call. But anyway, I said, fine, I don't have a problem, you know, speaking with anyone in authority. So I called and I get a phone call back from Pat Patterson. Do you guys know who Pat Patterson oh, is? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. So, so anyway, Pat calls me and um, I give him my idea and he gives me this kind of obligatory thank you, but no, thank you. We, you know, we're just not interested in doing that right now. And I was like, okay, no big deal. I literally put it out of my mind. I'm like, I love being a mom. That's my greatest thing ever. I didn't think another thing of it. Hmm. And then, um, maybe a month or two went by and I was actually at my grandparents and he called me. He said, what are you doing? Cause it was just a few days before Christmas. And I said, I'm at grand and granny's, you know, what's up? And he said, pack your bags. They want to do your idea. I was like, are you kidding? Like, I, I was shocked. I was, you know, I just figured, you know, they had no interest anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just like, I loved that character because I created her. Like I knew when, when young talent today asked me to like watch a match or help them or tell them, you know, what to do better. The first thing I asked them is tell me about your character. So often what they'll tell me is, what I can already see. Like I'm supposed to be like a big meathead from the gym and I, you know, and that's, I'm like, mm -mm, you don't know your character. Like if you don't know your character, they're not, the audience is not going to know your character. And I, so I try to teach them like when you are driving and someone cuts you off, instead of you responding in your mind or with your mouth, the way you would 
do it in your character. What, what would your character say? Like when you eat breakfast, what would your character eat for breakfast? Start literally 24 seven living with your character. Living in that Learning. Yes, yes, yes. Because once you know who you are as a character, you can convey it and they will buy into it 100%, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I knew who that character was because I created her. I knew exactly, you know, what she did 24 seven. And so, yeah, that was fun. That was a really long way. Like I went down a rabbit hole. What was the actual question that you asked me? Well, I mean, ever, ever since you actually brought that up, I just, I got to ask in 2020, would Marlena switch to vapes instead of cigars since smoking <laughs> is not allowed in certain arenas? No, no, no. no. She would just go teetotal. She smoke afterward. Okay. Well, my original question. What, 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 what's funny though is initially, I think it was like the first month, Vince would not let me light the cigar. And, and I'm like, Vince, it looks so stupid. And it was Pat Patterson who finally, like me and Pat, both like getting on him saying, you know, that's the whole thing, the smoke, the, you know. And so finally he said, okay, fine, you can light it, but God damn it, don't do it until right before you go out. I don't want to smell that shit. <laughs> Which is funny because they had him on the cover of Cigar Aficionado years later. So anyway, yeah. What were you smoking? Um, well, I have a dear friend who owns a, um, a prestige cigar uh, brand. His name is Rocky Patel. So I would smoke a lot of Rocky Patel cigars. Um, I love Padrones. I loved um, Davidoff. I was, I was a fan of some of Davidoff's stuff. Um, I smoked the little Avos here and there. Um, I never liked Cubans. So yeah, I was pretty domestic in terms of um, like Nicaragua, Honduras, places like that is where the tobacco that I smoked came from normally. Well, your character, Marlena, it definitely got over with the audience. And I have to ask, since your character was getting over, did that cause any heat between you and the boys backstage? No, why would, why, why would it have? Because some of the characters that they was going out, sometimes the audience wasn't resonating with, but yeah. you and Gold Dust, they were all about it. Oh, they hated us. They hated us in the beginning, which is exactly what they should have done, right? If we were doing our jobs correctly, they should have hated us. Um, no, but the, the, Dustin got a lot of heat in the beginning because like um, Scott Hall didn't want to work with him because you know he was like, I guess, homophobic and it, he felt like that was just too much for him. Um, but, you know, eventually everybody came around and lauded Dustin because he was doing such a great job with the character. I mean, you're talking about a six foot five cowboy boot wearing tobacco chewing Texan that is playing this character to a T. And, um, yeah, I still don't know where Vince came. I don't know the connection. I need to ask this Vince, uh, Vince before he dies or before I die. What was the, what was the idea, the impetus for the character Gold Dust, and what was it that made him connect that with Dustin? You know, I have no idea. Right, because they're his character versus the character that he was in real life. His true life yes. character was totally yeah. different. Because let's face it, the natural Dustin Rhodes and WCW that's Dustin, you know, Dustin was being an, a little bit amplified, um, Dustin Rhodes, you know, <coughs> I have to COVID cough every once in a while. <laughs> I got tested the other day and I'm, I'm negative. I'm so excited. Good news. Yes. I'm, right. I'm not having any symptoms, but I feel like that the less I know the better. So ignorance <laughs> is bliss. I'm not trying to get tested. <laughs> that's funny. I know Like every time I cough, I go, mm, was that a, was that a COVID cough? <laughs> Anyway, but with the other ladies in the Federation at the time, Sunny China. That's what you asked me. How did I get along with them? Yes. Okay. So when I got there, it was just Sunny and I. Um, and then a short while later, they brought in Sable. Sable hated Sunny and Sunny hated Sable. I had no respect for Sable because of the mother she was. I, I didn't agree with the way she would leave and go on the road with Mark, her husband at the time, for 18 days, 12 days, and leave her daughter at home. When I signed my contract with Vince, I said, 
I'm a mom first, I'm a wife second, I'll bust my ass for you third, but you are in third place. I will not do a house shows, I'll only do TVs and pay-per-views. So I was away from my child for three days at a time, um, and then for four days, 24 seven, like my nanny would switch from being 24 seven nanny taking care of Dakota to being my personal assistant because I wanted to do everything for my child. Like if my child wanted a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I was making it. Nobody else was, you know? And so my, my name, before I would ever hire them, I would tell them, you know, you're, you're going to switch roles when I get home. Um, you're going to like do the laundry. You're going to go to the bank for me, dry cleaners, grocery shopping, post office, you know, you're going to do all that stuff. And I'm mom, you know? So, um, yeah. And so I just didn't have respect for her in the way she was a mom. I just didn't. Sunny treated me like I was, she called me mama tear and I really tried to encourage her to do good things. And sometimes she listened and sometimes she didn't. Um, but, um, literally this, this would be the, the scenario in the dressing room when it was the, just the three of us, I would be in the middle, you know, putting on makeup, doing whatever. Sable here, Sunny here, and whatever one wanted the other one to know about, they would tell me so that the other one would hear it. So like, you're not gonna believe what I did, and da, 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 da. you know, like stuff like that they wanted the other one, and it was just like, uh, get me out of here, you know? It was uncomfortable. Um, and then Joni came in, and um, it's funny, Dakota, the minute she met her, she fell in love with Joni and she called her Miss Big Joni. And so um, I'll never forget. I think it was WrestleMania 13. Um, my mom had come up to stay in the hotel with, with Dakota to keep her while, you know, we were doing the, the um, pay-per-view. And that night after the pay-per-view, um, that, that was the night that Joni had once again, sh you know, shaken me like a rag doll. Yes. Um, Did that hurt? Oh, babe, at the moment it's happening because there's so much adrenaline pumping, you don't feel it. The next day, like I couldn't move. It was so bad. Um, but I, you know, with everything I ever did, any bump I ever took from the boys, I wanted it to look so good. So I would much rather hurt than for it to look lame and, and the guy looked lame or me look lame because I didn't take it well or because he didn't, you know, give it to me or whatever. Anyway, um, I, I get back to the hotel room. Dakota's like got wet hair. She's got her on her PJs and she's crying because she wants to see Miss Big Joni. So I called and at the time she and Hunter were together and I called and I'm like, I am so sorry to do this to you guys. Do you mind if Dakota comes up and says good night? And they're like, no, no, come on. So, I mean, she was just very good with, with Dakota and, and we have fond memories of Miss Big Joni. I hated the, the turn her life took, you know, it made me so sad. But um, anyway, you know, I, we prefer to remember the, the early days and the good days. So. Right. Absolutely. Well, one of the great things about watching Monday Night Raw during that attitude era and back in the day really was just it was like a soap opera on tv and one of the most infamous interviews i remember you having was i believe it was 1997 it was with your ex-husband dustin and jim ross was doing the interview and dustin broke up with you on camera and i know that in real life you guys were actually broken up no no okay so not at all let me tell you the story okay yes take. Because I, I just talked about this on my live stream. By the way, you guys have to join my live stream. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday nights. 7 o'clock. I usually do catch it. You do? I do. I'm a huge fan. Good girl. You need to ask a question in a minute because he's talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, um, you guys remember the angle with Pillman where Pillman won me for 30 days, yep. right? And I was away from Dakota and I was with Pillman and... Um, Side, side note to that, I'm very claustrophobic, and because of CAFE back then, we were still practicing it. I loved it. I hate that we don't do it anymore, but anyway. I agree. I had to leave the arena in the trunk of our car, oh, no. and I was just, like, freaking out, like, screaming from the trunk, like, Dustin, hurry, hurry. Um, so, 
you know, of course I didn't go with Brian Pillman. Of course I went home and I, you know, got a month off. I just did some vignettes, you know, they would fly me somewhere to do vignettes with Brian. So then at the end of the 30 days, Dustin and I are to renew our vows. And um, when it came time for the, the minister to say, is there anyone here that sees, you know, that finds a reason for these two not to be joined together? Pillman was going to come out and he and Dustin were going to, you know, tie into each other and um, he was going to like bleed. And I was going to fall over him and like get blood all over my wedding dress, my gold <laughs> wedding dress. Um, and tell Dustin, you know, I'm sorry, but the 30 days I was with him, I fell in love with him. Don't hurt him. And, and I, I was going to go with Brian and they were going to turn Dustin, um, face. And, um, as you guys know, at that pay-per-view, which was on my birthday, uh, October 5th, we'll never forget, he passed away. And, um, so I had just done a third party appearance, um, with either, I think it was Alpha or. I don't think it was Sika, but Alpha in Pennsylvania. Um, and that, that was the first time I ever met Luna Vachon and loved her right away, loved her to pieces. So I went back to Vince and Dustin and I were in his office and I'm like, dude, I have a great idea. Like have her to just switch it around and have Dustin, you know, go with her and basically say, while you were gone, I found someone that, understands me because you don't so it's funny hold on i feel like i cheap cotton balls <laughs> it's funny because um i had family members call and say oh my god are y'all are getting into <laughs> <laughs> we were so together at the time i didn't divorce dustin until 99 um and like but when I look back at that, like, I'm kind of proud of myself. I think I did a darn good acting job on that yeah, one, right? It was so believable. I felt so uncomfortable watching it. I think I cried maybe the third or four, because we've watched it a couple of times. I Aww. think I cried. Oh, well, yeah. I felt good about it when I had family members calling and going, are y'all okay? What's, what's going on? So, yeah, we were very married at that point. So, for years, I thought that was somewhat real. So. That was all kayfabe. Oh. Staying, keeping in character. All storyline bullshit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So it wasn't too long after that interview that you made the switch from the Marlena character to using your name, Terry Runnels, just with the voltage turned all the way up. And yeah. you um, started doing more in-ring action. Was that by choice or was that Vince McMahon? Hell to the no. <laughs> so, so basically the first... Um, I guess revision of character was me starting PMS yep. and I hated that name. I was just like, really? Like all I could think of was bloody tampons. Are you kidding me? We got to call us PMS. Come on now. Um, hated it. Hated the name. Loved working with Jackie. She's a hoot and a holler. Um, but it, like I never wanted to, like, I will take bumps from the guys all day long, all day long. But to have a match with another woman, uh-uh, no. And I remember so vividly begging Vince, Vince, please, please, please don't make me wrestle. I'm not good at it. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never trained. I, 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 if, you know, I said, you know, Vince, this was my rationale. I'm like, you know, Vince, when people enjoy what they do, they do it a lot better. And I enjoy managing and I enjoy taking bumps, but I do not enjoy wrestling and I don't want to do it. Patting me on the shoulder. He said, you're going to be a great kid. So literally, and, and I, I, I said this the other night on the live stream, find me another female or male, either one that literally Hours before going live in front of millions of people, you are taught a few moves. And like, I had to learn it like a dance. And like, God forbid, if they ever told the ref for us to go home early, because mm -mm, mama had to do it exactly like I had learned it. Or I, there was no um, improv with that, you know? And so... Every time I would get to TVs, I would, I would wait to see like what I had to do. And if I didn't have to wrestle, I would like literally just like love the day. If I got there and saw I had to wrestle, I was just like, 
I was sick to my stomach all afternoon. Like I could throw up all afternoon. And, but even though my wrestling isn't great, and even though I had like, think about the things I had to wear too. And, and, you know, Heidi hanging out. And all no that complaints. Kind of, yeah. No complaints here either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to be uncomfortable wrestling and then to have your ass hanging out. Um, you know, I remember like every time right before you would see me come out of the Titan Tron, I mean, literally I could have thrown up and, but the minute I walked through, I tried so hard to own it and just pretend that I wanted to do it and <laughs> that I, yeah, but yeah, I could not get through fast enough and get back to the dressing room fast enough. I hated wrestling. See, did that you just it did not come across like that though you mm -hmm. really i, I want to say that you really exude i mean a lot of the things that i wanted to be as a woman because i also would watch um like i was telling terry before she got or before you got on adam we've been friends for you know about 23 years so that was one of the things that we used to talk about when we were younger was wrestling and i have to say you know watching it as a young female to see how I am now like I like to think that you're one of the people that gave me the confidence uh -huh. that people always tell me they love about me because that. you showed me what it was like to be beautiful but you also showed me what it was like I can whoop you real easy because you did and you made that transition just so flawless Bless so it you. just it kind of baffles me to hear that, that you know you you got nervous too you oh. know it oh. just I, I just don't know I just tried to make sure no one knew it you know and, and and we didn't nobody knew and nobody knew that moments before i was going oh. <laughs> no you were about <laughs> absolutely <to fall>. <laughs> absolutely not did you have a desire once you started to get in the ring and wrestling to become the woman's champ at all no and i'll tell you i'll tell you why in order to be the woman's champ you've got to go on the road you got to do house shows and again i was not going to trade my kid for a bigger role they could have at any point given me more um put me at a higher you know i guess star rating but because i had set those parameters and said you know pay-per-views and tvs only um you can't have someone with the belt who's only doing tvs and pay-per-views they've got to go on the road and they've got to defend that belt and um it was just something i wasn't willing to do so I feel like with every year that you were in the WWF, it was changing dramatically. 96 was different from 97 to 98 to 99. What was your favorite era to work in? 2002 was my favorite year. Ooh, when you I'm was getting, getting backstage, when you was doing the, um, I know you used to host a show with, um, I used to let co host co this, co-host with uh, Jonathan. Loved Hunt. doing that show. Loved doing that show. When, when the whole, um, the first ever, you know, the, um, what was it? I wanted to say an auction. That's not what, when, when they um, divvied everyone up between SmackDown and Raw. Oh, the draft. The draft. draft. Yeah. The draft. I will never forget, um, like, we're in the studio talking about the draft, and I'm like, wait a second. I don't want to stop doing this show. Because every weekend, I would go and do the show with Coach, and then they would have me at Times Square at the World, which is the restaurant we had um, there. Um, you know, Chris Angel had his Mind Freak show in the basement of, of our um, building there. And I had the best time, like every weekend in Times Square, um, you know, I, I would bring Dakota up so often and, you know, we were constantly going to a, a new Broadway show. And I think, I think my child had seen about 10 Broadway shows by the time she was five. Yeah. And it's funny, she flew with me so often, like in the beginning, I didn't have a live-in nanny for her. And so they would fly her with me and this is like way back in the day where you know they hand wrote out tickets and stuff like that and you know you went to the actual airport to get a ticket you know you know you didn't you didn't online it or anyway so i'm there with her she's like maybe three and um i was gonna fly her to texas to see her aunt chrissy which is dustin's whole blood sister yeah his only full-blooded sister and so um I said to the gentleman, I said, I want to use her sky miles to fly her out. And he's like scoffed. He's like, <laughs> ma'am, um, it takes 25,000 miles for a round trip ticket. 
And I was not rude back. I said, sir, I think if you'll look at her SkyMiles account, you'll see that she has that and then some. And I will never forget him pulling it up and going, oh my gosh. So she was my little road warrior, my little travel buddy. And we had the best time together. We would fly and daddy was already on the road because he did house shows and stuff. And so we would fly in and meet up with him. And half the time, Dakota and I would get in and I wouldn't let her jump on the bed at home. But one of the luxuries of being on the road in every hotel, she got to jump on the bed. And so she loved that. She loved jumping on the bed, ordering room service. This kid, let me tell you two stories about traveling with her. She was so used to being on the road. Um, and this, both of these stories, I'm going to tell you, she was about three or three and a half. Um, <laughs> we, because Destin was already on the road, I had to pack for me my character, you know, those long dresses. Cause back then we did, I did raw and SmackDown before I would fly home. Right. So, um, and if I had a pay-per-view on top of that, you've got the pay-per-view dress, the raw dress and the SmackDown dress. So a lot, you know, a lot of clothes from Arlena, a lot of clothes for me, clothes for Dakota, the car seat, the, the, you know, the whole thing. I get everything packed up, deal with Atlanta traffic, get to the uh, airport park, schlep everything in with my kid, you know, dragging my kid, dragging all the stuff and um, go through security. Finally, we get to the airplane and I sit down like totally exasperated. Dakota's right here in the window, seat 1D, I'm 1C and the flight attendant says, you know, ma'am, what can I get you to drink? And I said, oh, a Bloody Mary and an apple juice, please. This little shit, doesn't miss a beat. She turns around. She was looking out the window. She turns around. She goes, make that two Bloody Marys, please. <laughs> my child didn't know what a Bloody Mary was, but I think she was thinking like, well, if my mom is having a Bloody Mary, so am I. So <laughs> I popped. I the flight attendant popped. We were like, oh my God, that's the funniest thing. And then the other thing that cracked me up, we were at home and um, it was in the morning and, and she was in bed with me and because dad was not his dad was on the road and she goes um mommy um I think that I would like some no she said the words room service first from room service I would like some bacon and some pancakes and I said angel pie do you realize that we're home like I am room service like we're not in a hotel like this is home like she was just so used to being and hotels and room service and uh, yeah so it was just funny when she and she was like totally serious like she was gonna order room service at, at home bless her heart well let me just say really quick it says here at the top that it, we have a remaining time of one and a half minutes left. holy crap okay i know so is this just gonna cut us off amber is it that, will uh, unfortunately okay so we can do this again sometime guys please i would absolutely we, love to hey i love you too I mean, Terry, you can go ahead and give me that follow back on Twitter or Insta. You know, I'm, I'm fo following do you. Me, do me a favor. Yes, ma'am. Get get both of your um, usernames to, to Martin. I'll do that. I'll okay. get it. And we'll he do. is so amazing, by the way. I just Love, he's my bestie. Him. He's my he bestie. Is, he's so nice. <laughs> he really is. Thank you. I will tell him that. Yes. Um, and yeah, and, and if you guys are on my live stream, make sure you'd say who you are so I'll know. Yes. Oh, okay. Before absolutely. we jump at him, I'm saying one thing. I just want you to know that Royal Rumble 2000, you in that bikini was quite possibly the hottest thing in this entire world. <laughs> and I just want you to know, I am very happily married to my husband, but you, you, yeah, it was great when you, Thank you bent over those ropes and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I have to do my thing. I have to do my rope thing, even though I'm, you know, and that was during my nude phase. Everything I had, I was like nude boots, nude outfits, nude. Yeah. You were incredible. Loved it. Looked Thank incredible. Loved someone, it. Stole, someone stole that suit too. And I have no idea. If no. You ever it was me. <laughs> it was me. You guys have a great night and um, let's do this again.